Good morning, everyone. Greetings from uh, sunny Devon. Uh, but if you'd uh, like to turn just a couple of verses from Exodus chapter 34. Exodus 34, <clears throat> verses 8 to 9. So Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. Then he said, if now I found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go among us, even though we are a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us as your inheritance. And uh, I think it's very remarkable. It, it's one of only two verses that I can think of where we are described as God's inheritance. Um, the idea of um, God being our inheritance or heaven being our inheritance is, is fairly, uh, fairly well known. Uh, Peter writes, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, that does not pass away, reserved in heaven for you. So the idea of... Um, of, of God being our inheritance, that one day we shall come uh, to heaven and uh, we shall see him for ourselves and so forth is, uh, is, is, is well known. But the idea of, uh, of, of God having an inheritance, which is, which is us, is uh, I think something that's very uh, wonderful and remarkable. And uh, I, I was thinking about this a little bit and uh, it, it's a great many years now since I visited um, Monte Carlo and Monaco and um, I was thinking about this um, that um, it, it's chock-a-block full of, of millionaires as, as people know and uh, in my mind I, I see this this millionaires uh, club and all these people are talking amongst themselves and, and one of them uh, points out of the window at, at the state-of-the-art brand new Rolls-Royce outside and he says oh, oh this this is this is my inheritance and then another chap um, points to the harbour and there's an enormous great yacht there with um, all, all the mod cons, the jacuzzi on the poop deck and um, radar control and this and that. And it's all, well, that was my inheritance. And a third one points to a dirty great big mansion up on the hill, um, hundreds of rooms and so forth. And he said, this is my inheritance. And then the, the, the one who is, is richer, far richer than all the other ones put together, points out to another side of the hill where there's some sort of encampment of uh, tramps and gypsies and uh, assorted ragbag of people. And he said, this, this is my inheritance. And uh, that, that's, that's what we're, we're looking at here. To, uh, think, think again, perhaps, of uh, uh, a chap again in, in, in a huge, uh, there's a huge house. And, and this, this um, cavalcade of, 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 of tramps and uh, assorted gypsies, don't mean to be rude to gypsies, but uh, people, generally disreputable people and uh, uh, mangy dogs and all sorts coming up to the house and um, the butler, Carson the butler opens the door and uh, he said, well, can I help you? He said, yes, we'd like to see the owner, please. Uh, we're his inheritance. And uh, the uh, the owner of the house appears, and he's got a huge staircase there. And he appears at the top and says, wonderful. I've been looking forward for so long to seeing you. And now, um, Carson, I want you to clean these people up. I want you to make them book of their coming to live in my mansion with me. And it, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing thought, isn't it? And um, uh, that, that God is looking forward with all his heart for, for his inheritance. And... Um, Immediately, the, the question might be asked: What what sort of what sort of inheritance is is it? Uh, is it is it is it a large inheritance or, or just a small one? And uh, we we look at uh, uh, Psalm two and verse eight, where the father says to the son, "Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, the end of the earth for your possession." And uh, what do you think? Um, the Lord Jesus says to the Father at that point, does he say, Father, do not bother me with your um, 
with your highfalutin ideas and schemes, I should be quite happy with just a few people. I don't think so. I don't think so. The Lord Jesus Christ will have a, a vast, a vast inheritance. And in uh, uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, we read that for the joy set before him, um, he, he endured the cross, short, scorning its shame. And this was for his inheritance. This was for his inheritance as a, a great people. And, and we find in a variety of verses, particularly John's gospel, uh, that they're, they're the people given by the father to the son and he will redeem it. And they are his inheritance. And um, so God has a great inheritance, a vast inheritance. And uh, it will be seen uh, on that last day when we, uh, we, we, we stand before the throne and uh, Revelation 7 and verse 9. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all, all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. It's, it's a vast uh, tribe. No one can number it. So well, how big is it compared with the population of the odd? I don't know. No, one can, no man can number it. So I can't tell you. Uh, but it, it, is, it, is, it is huge. It is beyond, uh, veritably beyond number. So we should be... Uh, we should have a degree of, of, of confidence as we, uh, as, as we come to prayer that, that um, God in the person of Jesus Christ has this huge inheritance of people and he is looking forward and, uh, to coming in to his inheritance. And therefore we should be bold in our prayers and uh, in our expectations. And the very well-known story uh, involving Spurgeon which uh, I expect ma many of you will know that uh, a man, uh, a preacher came to see Spurgeon and he was saying, I, I, you know, I preach my little heart out week after week. I don't seem to see uh, people coming to Christ. I don't seem to see any result to my labors. And Spurgeon said to him, well, you don't ex do you expect to see people uh, saved every time you preach? And he said, well, no, 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 of course not. And Spurgeon asked, well, there's your problem. There's your problem. You're, you're, you're set your sights too low. Uh, you need to expect that you will see uh, people saved each time we stand, uh, you stand up in the pulpit. And we, we have good reason to be confident. Um, and um, we should be thinking to ourselves every time that we will see more people. I mean, one does not know what is next um, on um, the Father's agenda. I don't know if it's uh, sacrilegious to speak of uh, God keeping a diary, but um, if we if we suppose that he did, we, we would imagine a date with with a with a ring round it, and it's marked return of Christ, end of world, day of judgment. And uh, I know some very uh, wise folk uh, are, are thinking to themselves that this may be very very near, and that. Uh, all the troubles we see at the moment we, we are, are the start of Satan's little se uh, season and uh, that uh, there is um, this uh, uh, problem. Sorry, that's my phone ringing, but someone will answer it in a minute. Um, uh, that, that, that there is very little time now, and that may be true, I don't know. Uh, but if it is, it means we would work all the harder to bring people into the kingdom. But may it not be that sometime before uh, that event ring round, there is another, there is another date. And it, the date says, bring revival on Britain. And there's a date that the father has a purpose and he is going to bring uh, that, uh, that revival that we, we look for. And the number of people uh, that, that are gonna be saved will be huge, much more than we imagine. And so we, we let, let us uh, pray, with, with great confidence today. And let us be particularly importunate that Christ has this inheritance. And if, if you and I had an inheritance, we, we, would, uh, we would keep our eye on it, we would look after it. And uh, so our Lord looks after his inheritance. He has washed us clean in his own blood that he may receive us, not just as an inheritance, but as his bride as well, holy and without blemish. And he's looking forward to this. So let us, let us be confident in our prayers. Let us be confident in our preaching. And let us, uh, let us be assured that Christ 
has a, a vast number of people beyond any ability of ours to, uh, to count that he is expecting as his inheritance. Amen. Let's pray.